Okay, yet another question from modern physics and very simple, straightforward. Consider a hydrogen like ionized atom with atomic number Z and a single electron. It means all Bohr's equation would be valid. In the emission spectrum of this atom, from 2 to 1, it has an energy so many times higher than the photon emission that happens from the transition 3 to 2. The ionization energy had been given. We need to give the value of Z. All right. Now, first, the energy which is, you know, emitted when there is a transition from 2 to 1 is straight with 13.6 Z square 1 minus 1 by 4. And this is 74.8 higher. So that means that will be plus 13.6 Z square, the transition 3 to 2. So that's going to be 1 by 4 minus 1 by 9, right? Now, this is only the thing what we require. And you solve this, you will get Z square equals to 9, and the value of Z would be 3. So 3 is the correct answer for question number 14. With this, we end up the second section. Now it's time to go to the third segment. Let's see. Okay, so here is the next segment question. And these segments would be including the matrix match. And here the matrix match of the first question, question number 15, is about the electric field. Electric field is measured at point 0, 0, D. That means the Z axis is there due to various charge distribution and the dependence of E on D. Straightforward question with a minor modification there is there. Like a point charge Q is at the origin. So quite obviously, electric field due to that point charge would be inversely proportional to D square. So option number one, this side, will have R as the correct one. It's better you start from this and you match. That would be an easier one. Then a small dipole with point charge Q at 0, 0, L. It's something like this. Let me just show in this way. This has x-axis. Y, let me take inside. So this is going to be the z-axis. Now here, point charge 1 is here, and negative point charge is here. This distance is, of course, L. And you know, D is the distance along the z-axis. So electric field due to this dipole has to be calculated along the axial line because 0, 0, D for this will be the axial. And you know, for axial, electric field is inversely proportional to D cube. Let me see the option. D cube is for S. So this will be having S as the option. Now next, an infinite line charge coincident with the x-axis with uniform linear charge density. Now here again, I'll be taking the same pattern. This is x. Y would be taken inside, so this would be z-axis. Now, what you'll get is, this is the line charge, which is along x-axis. And we need to find the dependence of electric field at a distance d from this line charge, because that point is at 0, 0, d. So that would be straightway, perpendicular distance d. And electric field due to a line charge is inversely proportional to d, which is there in option Q. So for this, option Q would be the correct one. Next here, two infinite wires carrying uniform linear charge density parallel to the x-axis. Now this one requires a bit of calculation. This is parallel to x-axis. So what I'll do is that, you see, x-axis I'll take outside and this will be y-axis and this will be z-axis. Now, x has to be out of the plane. This is just done to simplify the calculation here because that will help you to do the calculation in the plane. That's a simple mathematical technique. The 1 along y equals to 0, z equals to L. Here is 1, which is lambda. And the other is at y equals to 0, z equals to minus L. So here is minus lambda. And this is L and this is L. And we need to calculate the electric field at a distance 
d along z axis and that d is much much greater than 2l in other words that distance d is here and that is very much larger than l now the calculation of that is going to be lambda by 2 pi epsilon naught for the first one is going to be 1 upon d minus l and for the second is d plus l one electric field is due to this one the other electric field is due to this one they are opposite so that will be you know subtracted next let's see this is going to be lambda by 2 pi epsilon naught and upstairs you could see that's going to be 2l and downstairs would be d square minus of l square now here you can easily see d is much much greater than 2l in other words this l square would be neglected in other words this electric field will be inversely proportional to d square so let us see where is that electric field inversely proportional to d square okay that's in option number r so for this r would be the correct one and likewise the final one let's see infinite plane charge coincident with the xy plane with uniform surface charge density so this plane which is infinitely large is an xy plane and that point will have a perpendicular distance d from the plane and you know in that case electric field will be constant so where is that constant one let's try to see oh yes electric field is independent of d so the final one is going to have an option of So in this way, individually we have calculated the electric field. Let's see if anything is missing or not. So here you could see a point charge Q is at the origin that will be inversely proportional to D square and a small dipole that's inversely proportional to D cube and this one inversely proportional to D and this one inversely proportional to D square and the final one has no dependence on D. So all those options when you do, you will be landing up with option number B as the correct one. That's a straightforward one. So for this particular question, question number 15, option number B will be the correct one. Okay, now let's go for question number 16. 